thanks for joining us on State of the Union. This is a program that seeks to critically examine the Union, uh, talking about uh, Nigeria as a country, of course, uh, looking at uh, the various agitations, the various uh, concerns regarding the issues of governance, the developments in our polity, and of course, uh, the uh, need or the agitations for restructuring the country. Uh, constitutional amendment and several issues uh, that have to do with our nationhood. Uh, my name is Shafiu Suleiman and uh, today on the program we are looking at uh, one of the frontline issues in our polity that is the crisis rocking the uh, All Progressives Congress, uh, the ruling party in Nigeria. Now the leadership crisis rocking the APC is threatening to tear the party apart following the Court of Appeal ruling uh, upholding the suspension of the national chairman of the party, Adam Tushomali, by the local chapter of the party in his home state, Edu. Now, the Court of Appeal, which upholds the suspension, uh, of the court rather, also ordered that uh, Honorable Victor Gaidon, uh, who is the national vice chairman south of the party, uh, should act, you know, in the absence or after, uh, you know, having suspended the national chairman of the party. Now, in a unilateral decision, uh, the vice chairman, uh, South, talking about Adam, now unilaterally implemented that court order by declaring himself the acting national chairman of the party, notwithstanding uh, the provisions of the party's constitution. Now, let's hear you. Good evening and thanks for joining us on State of the Union. I have uh, an, at the moment in the studio the National Secretary of the Party, Elijah Musa Gabam, uh, who will be giving us uh, more insight uh, on this uh, statement and the concern. Thank you for joining us. My great pleasure. Thank you. Yes, you, you, you know, looking at the crisis at hand in the APC, some would say, why is uh, the SDP concerned about it? Some would say it's synonymous, you know, it is normal with politics, party politics in particular. Why is this one different? No, it's not normal. Once election took place mm. and the president is democratically elected, what the country needs is stability. What the country needs is dividends of that election. What the country needs is stability. What the country needs is economic prosperity. And what the country needs is fairness and justice and equity. And in the absence of this, and then you have the ruling party in a very terrible shape, scobbles within the leadership of the party, it has direct bearing, direct effect on the leadership or on the on the presidency that produce um, the, under the party, that become the president under the party. And there is no way it will not affect the running of the governance of the APC government because you hardly find a distinct between policy and politics. They are all interwoven together. And for that singular reason, it is critical for the party to put it act together. It is critical for the president to ensure that uh, the party is stable to have peace in the country. This is how PDP started. PDP had this crisis that led to uh, exiting of the party, led to the defeat of the incumbent president. And it appears clearly APC have not learned from PDP crisis. They have not developed capacity to deal with their internal issues, internal crisis. They shouldn't have snowballed born outside the arena of the party itself. But because also politicians do not respect the rule of law, they do not respect the processes of the party. They go outside the rules of the, the constitution of their party. Uh, every little thing they go to court. And also, the courts are not helping matters. The court will be somehow responsible for truncating this system if care is not taken. I could remember only really there are Supreme Court judgments that stop uh, lower courts from uh, unnecessary uh, uh, orders that will affect the parties. Parties are process of conventions. Conventions are the spring decisions of the party. So there are internal mechanisms of every party to solve issues. Now, if members 
by just going to a car process can wake up from their sleep because they disagree with certain issues and go to court. The, the party has the right to punish them and the court have the right to refer them back to the party to follow the processes that are involved. We are now suffering from massive insecurity in this country. Our system is being overstretched and you are having a government that is not stable. You are having a government that is suffering from its own internal crisis within the party machinery. And there's no way the economy will not be affected and, 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 and overstretching further the, the security apparatus of the country. Okay, now uh, the, the style of Mr. President, President Muhammad Bahari, uh, appeared to have deeper signal you know, from, from what we used to know. Uh, in the PDP that you talked about, there has been a lot of uh, you know, situations where the President had to intervene you know, to address uh, some party squabbles and disagreements. But in the, in the case of President Muhammad Buhari, it was clear, you know, right from day one, that he wouldn't want to interfere with party issues. He has left that to the party leadership and hierarchy and structures to resolve. He wants to face governance. Uh, isn't that, you know, the, the, the right approach to it, so that he is not distracted? No, no, no. It, it's simply because there's a difference between somebody who joins politics and, uh, and somebody who, whose career is politics. A career politician will not sit down and allow his political party to go and decide. It's, it's the same thing about the rule of law. It's the same thing about processes. You must ensure that your house is in order. No matter how you want to govern, if your house is in disorder, there's no way you can have a peace of mind. There's no way you can come up with policies and programs that cannot be altered, that cannot have crises that are politically oriented, that will water down the, no matter how important the program is. So it's absolutely very critical, very important for the president to ensure that his political party is very stable, crises are being uh, settled amicably, and also to ensure that unnecessary interference within the political structures should stop because we are almost trying to truncate the political process. We are almost trying to truncate democracy because two things truncate any democratic government, the insecurity and the instability of political parties. These are glaring two major fundamental factors that can always create problems for a democratically elected governors globally. So if political parties are not stable, if you create chaos around political parties, you will not have peace, even, even if it is not your own political party. Because politicians are trained to raise issues, even unnecessary issues. And they can dominate the airspace with those issues. And of course, they will begin to generate sympathy and, and listening ears. And, and at all times, you find out that they are damaging the mental instrument that will lead to stability of the political process. Talking about internal democracy and, of course, the mechanisms of, uh, to address disputes, uh, every party has its own constitution. Uh, but sometimes you find out this constitution is being set aside you know, by the individuals leading the party for the certain uh, reasons. Now, uh, it appears no one is there to apply the breaks, uh, breaks you know, in the APC. Uh, before now, the, uh, you know, the former or the suspended national chairman of the party was said to have been running an electoral party, you know, without the structures, uh, you know, without consulting with, with the structures of the party, yes, literally suspended the National Working Committee and all of that. And now that we are in this scope, um, and, and the top people that need to speak, from Mr. President to the leader of the party, appeared indifferent on this matter. How do you think of a situation like this can be resolved? Because we, we, it got into a situation whereby somebody rose up and said, yes, addressed the press conference and say, I am now the acting chairman of the party. And then the working committee also sat on the other hand to say, no, we have to look at the constitution. Who should take over and all of that? Two things can solve this problem. Mm -hmm. One, the, the neck of the party have the power to resolve issues any outstanding issues in the political party. Number two, the court should stop giving unnecessary uh, uh, judgments on political parties that can resolve their issues. And the, the most fundamental part of it is that APC wasn't properly defined as a political party. 
to the collection of people that are desperate to take PDP out of governance. They have not defined how the party will, will, will outlive them. They, they brought in the party just to win governance, not that the party that will outlive them and others will be in the party and also aspire to the political positions. That's why they had, the problem was inevitable. Mm-hmm. ABC problem was clearly from the takeoff. So it, it, just, was it is self-inflicted. It was self-inflicted because they are absolutely greedy, uh, including those who migrated from the PDP and jo- because they are not happy with the PDP as of then, with Jonathan government, mm-hmm. and joined APC while they were the problem of PDP. Now they went and created more problems in APC, knowing fully well that those in the APC then they were not fully experienced. They are not even in the act of running political parties, in the act of governance. So they, they, they just went and joined a ship that is mm-hmm. naturally going to be sink. And you can see it's sinking. Within one week, you have three national chairmen of the party emerging. A crisis is normal, it's part of the party. Mm-hmm. Any party that doesn't have a crisis is not a political party, it's a briefcase party. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't go beyond capacity to manage and reduce it to where it is today. You can see that. This problem plus the security issues that we are having is a threat to the country. If it is not clear, there's no way we can succeed, there's no way we can, uh, we can bring political uh, stability, economic prosperity. Given the statement of the National Security Advisor yesterday, after the meeting with the President and Commander in Chief, I became more worried because I know I anticipated that was the problem. The lack of coordination within the security teams, right. you know, compromise the security of Nigerians and their properties. Mm-hmm. People in the villages were are killed and burnt for no reason in their sleep. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and you see the, the security teams are busy getting fatter mm-hmm. and with ego problem, they cannot share intelligence. Everybody wants to claim he knows it all and compromising the Nigerian security. And, and what the president ought to have done, the action we have expected, is not enough for him to say, look, you are good, is not good enough. Right. No, the president is known to be decisive. And the president, as being a former military general, must be decisive. This country has lost so much human beings. Power is about taking a very tough decision. And any president who makes sentiments, regional issues, ethnicity, a religion can never take a top position. And the consequence is that you will suffer a, a, a very terrible embarrassment as a president, an embarrassment that will take you down, will take your history down, mm-hmm. and will take everybody uh, you know, in, in, into history of creating insecurity that led, that led to the loss of lives and properties of Nigerians. Yeah, the, the situation in the APC is very dicey considering the fact that it has multiple dimensions. We talk about, you know, uh, the, the leadership, the party um, uh, the, uh, crisis, I mean, the political angle to it, again, the legal angle to it. So, um, the, the body seems to be at a crossroad. Constitu- I mean, uh, the Court of Appeal, you know, uh, as claimed by, you know, by Adam, who is now also claiming to be uh, uh, the national chairman of the party, uh, in its order, that is after holding the suspension of Osho Mali, uh, did say that they should act, you know. And then the National Working Committee disregarded that ruling and, of course, uh, came up with Ajimo B uh, as the national chairman, who is also in this post. And then the next person, you know, uh, is, is, is taking charge mm-hmm. on his behalf. And then they've already started consolidating, you know, you know, waiting committees for the uh, party, domestic primaries, and they do all of that. It, it, it is becoming more and more complicated. It's not complicated. Okay. You see, the court have not dissolved the NWC. NWC are the one that have been empowered by the convention, by the neck of the party, to run the affairs of the party on a daily basis, to take decisions on behalf of the party. So NWC have the power to appoint, have the power to suspend, and then convey a neck for approval or reversal. Now, in this case, the NWC, knowing the processes that are involved, somebody who is all within the hierarchy of succession cannot claim leadership of a party. Somebody who is not the, 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 the deputy national chairman of the party, the national vice chairman of the party from the zone, 
cannot come and claim to be the national chairman of the party. It's not in the line of process. I think the court, so the, 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 the court, the court were, were, were misled. And instead of the court to do a thorough filing, they just issue a judgment just to create a massive crisis within the political party. Because what the court, what the judges did was to create crisis within the political party. But then the NDPC have the power to rectify it because they, they, they are constituted by convention and they, they, are, they have not been dissolved and they have to say these are the processes. It is not within the line of power to take power. So they have to make that clarification. It's not the disobedience to the court, but simply because he is not within the line of succession. And in politics, you cannot just bring somebody who has not gone through the process and impose him on a party. It has never happened. And it cannot happen. But and it's a Supreme yeah. Court judgment. Yeah, but is it not the same end of UC now that is also jettisoning uh, an exercise that was conducted by the suspended chairman of the party, Adam Sushomali? Before now, before his suspension, he has conducted what he called a screening of the governorship candidate in Edo, and then he came up with a verdict, you know, suspending the incumbent governor, I mean, uh, uh, disqualifying the incumbent governor and all of that. Now, the same NWC is also coming up with another committee to carry out another screening, which in effect, there was none. From what I read, there was no committee that was consulted to carry out any screening again. I'm not speaking for APC, I'm not an APC yes, person. Yes. But from what I saw and what I read, and from the people I have discussed in the APC, both the legally and what have you, there was none. The process has been completed. A committee has been consulted to go and conduct the primary headed by the governor of Imo Okay, State. not to review the... No, not to review, because okay. that has been concluded, that has been ratified. And therefore, it is a decision of the party whether the, the, uh, the, the man who went to court, uh, who wants to come and be the chairman of uh, uh, the party, he must work with the NWC. He cannot take decision alone. He doesn't have the power to impose a decision. He has said it himself. I saw him saying it that he, can, he have no power to take decision on his own. He must work with the working committee of the party. And therefore, the decision of the majority of the members of the NWC that have taken still stands. It cannot be reversed because it has been ratified. So, it, like, like I said, like there is every likelihood people are ignorant of the processes. NWC has been empowered by convention, which is the highest decision-making organ of the party, and the NEC, which is the second highest decision-making organ of the party, and then the NWC that coordinate between the NEC and the convention, that relate what transpired on daily basis uh, of the party to NEC and then the convention. So the, con the, the NWC are right in the decision they have taken because one individual cannot overrule it. If 10 NWC members assuming take a decision, the chairman cannot veto it. The chairman cannot veto it. Like in the case of this, 16 out of 21 members of the NWC, uh, I, I mean, endorse the, the chairmanship of uh, Ajimobi. Uh, you know, uh, going by the constitution. Yeah, exactly. It starts. Yeah, it starts. It starts. Okay. okay. Now, uh, there is also another concern because, just like I said earlier on, uh, resolving the matter is what is important to Nigerians. Um, Mr. President is yet to say something about it. The leader of the party has a stake and perhaps is having the moral body to also speak. I'm not saying that that's it, but some many believe that that was the reason why it's also not intervening. But there is an organ that is missing. That is the Board of Trustees, which the party has not inaugurated since its inception. Perhaps it would have addressed the problem. How are you looking at that? Well, uh, had it been the hand Board of Trustees, because the Board of Trustees, mm -hmm. by definition, by their functionality, are uh, uh, elders of the party who, are, uh, who have a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience to manage political crises. In the absence of the Board of Trustees, uh, all they need is to convey the next meeting of their party and deal with these issues. But I think what affected APC most is lack of uh, a defined position by the president, uh, by allowing the party to do whatever they want. And uh, at the last minute, you always make attempt to rescue the party. But the situation is If a party has been involved into a deep crisis, it is very, very difficult for you to rescue it because conflicted interests have gone deeper.
And the moment you begin to say you, you must go this, you must go this, it affects the government because those who have exerted influence in what is going on are members of the cabinet of the president. So they are they have exerted on certain interests. They are divided along 2023 elections. There are those for A, those for B, those for C. So because the president have allowed the thing to remain uh, so, okay. so okay. yes, without anything, everybody is falling apart. And eventually, like I said, the party is going to pack up and it's packing up already because some members of the party are addressing press conference. You know that if this thing has not been set up within. Uh, days, mm -hmm. they are all going to move out of APC. Mm -hmm. This is how PDP started. And then what we are telling them, what we are telling the whole Nigerians, mm -hmm. we are here as the SDP, we have provided the ambience and the leadership. So you want to take advantage of the situation? Of course, to, why, to we don't have the advantage. Even by assessment, we are the best, most organized party, mm. uh, even by rating. So you're starting so, lobbying already? No, we are not lobbying. They have their, <laughs> they look, APC and PDP have created massive problems for this country. It is high time for younger generations to begin to look at uh, another way of, you know, protecting the future of the country and their own future as well. So are we going to, really really like really see, mess. to see the, the re-emergence or the consolidation of the third force, the seeming third force? Whether you call it third force or otherwise, mm -hmm. it is in history. Mm -hmm. No party has ever conducted a free and fair election in the history of Nigeria like SDP. There's no party in history. Maybe because yes. it have not been, been given multiple opportunities. You just had one opportunity in 1993. No, but we conducted so many elections. We, we are going backward simply because politicians are very greedy, coupled with the conspiracy of the security agencies, subverting the processes, and INEC also compromising along the line. And that is what we are paying for today. That's a serious allegation. I know it's an allegation. And an operational person. When an INEC official will see clearly people are rigging elections, security agencies will not arrest you. And those elections were not properly conducted. And I think will announce the person who have not ever won the election that have won the election, and then the, the process is being compromised completely. And you are telling me we are. We are but but is, it, 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 is it the responsibility of INEC now to. Uh, it, it, it's, it's responsibility, is of course, is to the responsibility of INEC if there are malpractices that are going on to suspend the election. It is their responsibility. It's part of it's, it's their function. How they they are to regulate the process. Yeah. They are the one conducting the election. So if they are the abnormalities, are they not doing that in a way? So what stop them from doing it in a place that is clearly, clearly, there's no doubt about it, uh, processes has have been abused and they let go. Well, I think it's a very serious challenge to the INEC, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, the elected umpire, and of course the critical stakeholders in the polity. Um, we have to you know, come to the end of this discussion, uh, even though I want to know maybe perhaps you want to talk about the suggestions on how the party can go about addressing the issue, but you are also not, uh, uh, I mean, folding your arms, waiting for the fallout. So that we, you can also consolidate. No, what is, what is critical is to save this country, yes. to allow the political process to go on so that development can go on. Okay. Any country that is suffering po from political instability, no single investor will come in because political instability escalates security situation in the country. Now, our predominant concern as politicians, how can we save democracy? How can we save this country from what is going on? That is a preoccupied uh, uh, Not necessarily the political game. No, not necessarily the political game. The country mm -hmm. must be on mm -hmm. before politicians can contest elections. Right. When the country is not stable, you can't go for any election. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to show Musa Gabam, the National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, uh, giving us his perspective on the lingering and protracted crisis, leadership crisis in the APC, and its impact on governance and stability of the country. Thank you very much, once again. Very pleasure. Thank you so on, much. On his behalf and the technical crew. My name is Shafir Salem. Now, while that happened, another drama ensued when 16 out of the 21 National Working Committee members of the party, led by Hilary Tan, met and of course endorsed uh, the provisions of the party's constitution, which provides uh, that the national, uh, the deputy national chairman, South, talking about uh, 
the former governor of the state, I mean, Abiola Ajimobi, uh, should step in, you know, uh, in the absence of the national chairman who has been suspended. But Ajimobi is currently in the schools to the health, uh, which uh, gave birth to the ascension of Rahil Edita, uh, who is next, you know, in the, in the succession. Um, now, Eta and the team have already started consolidating uh, this arrangement by inaugurating uh, some committees uh, that are expected to, uh, you know, work out the the timeline for the industrial governorship uh, election, uh, which is uh, coming up uh, soon. Let's hear this uh, group now led by Hilary Eta. Uh, talking about the reason why they had to step in in spite of the court ruling. Good evening and thanks for joining us on State of the Union. Um, my name is Sophia Suleiman and today on the platform we're looking at uh, one uh, of the trending political issues in Nigeria talking about the protracted crisis in the All Progressives Congress. Uh, talking about the leadership crisis that is seem to be tearing the party apart. Uh, as we speak, you know, uh, there has been several changes you know, to the chairmanship of this party, talking about the ruling party, uh, courtesy of the Court of Appeal uh, judgment or ruling that uphold the suspension of the uh, important chairman of the party, Comrade Adam Sushumali. Now, uh, the people have uh, been claiming, you know, the leadership of this political party uh, from the one that uh, is said to uh, should to take over uh, from Ashomale, talking about uh, uh, Senator, former Senator Ajima, former Governor uh, Ajimobi, who is now battling, you know, for uh, his life, um, having uh, been facing critical uh, health uh, situation. And of course, the national, the deputy, uh, I mean, the, the national vice chairman of the party, uh, who also happens to come from the south, uh, uh, south, south, to Kinaba and uh, the one that is recognized by the National Working Committee of the party, uh, Elliot Eta. And of course, all of this is happening on, uh, you know, uh, in the same political party. Uh, this crisis or struggle for the soul of the party is not only tearing the party apart, but also uh, threatening our democracy. So we'll be looking at the implications of all of these struggles and, of course, uh, how it uh, will either deepen or, uh, you know, undermine our democratic uh, governance in this country. And uh, we'll be joined by uh, Professor Jibril Ibrahim, uh, a former director of the Centre for Democracy and Development, uh, to get his perspective on this. A protracted uh, crisis. Uh, thank you, Professor, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Right. Um, it is not the first time that uh, the ruling uh, APC is enmeshed in this kind of crisis. Um, there was temporary or temporary reprieve, so to speak. You know, when uh, the, there was an intervention from the, the president and, of course, the leader of the party uh, at the peak of the struggle to get rid of the national chairman of the party talking about uh, Senator and I mean Comrade Adam Sushomali. Uh, but this did not last long. The uh, uh, um, of this ruling that we looking at this, you know, long or the protracted, protracted, you know, leadership crisis in the APC? I think it's a clear illustration the Nigerian political parties do not practice internal party democracy. Because all these crises that have been built for so long are all related to undemocratic decisions imposed by somebody within the leadership without due consideration and discussions with others in the party. For example, in this specific situation, we had a situation in which the ch party chairman has a fight with the Edo state governor. The party chairman then single-handedly appoints all those to organize the primaries, all those to organize the clearance of the governor. And it's not surprising if they came out with a verdict that he was not qualified 
to contest. This was the same person who, uh, four years ago, the party chairman had said he was the only qualified person, the best qualified person for the position. So clearly, it was this unilateral decision by the chairman of the party that precipitated uh, the crisis. When this crisis started over his leadership, that was the leadership of Adam Zoshiomode, it went up to the National Working Committee and the National Executive Committee of the party. And many party members and leaders said this chairman is reckless. He takes unilateral decisions. He has an agenda that he wants him by force on the party and therefore was no suitable material for the chairmanship of the party. In that situation, the party should have taken a decision to uh, get a chairman that would be more in line with the aspirations of the party, but that did not happen. The party doesn't have a functional board of trustees, so there was nobody to even intervene. The president of Nigeria, who is a member of the party, has repeatedly shown that he is not willing to intervene when quarrels break out. So when this situation arose, there was no adult in the room to propose a reasonable or rational decision for the party so that they could uh, move forward. Uh, the party became a laughing stock. Within 24 hours, we have four different people being paraded as the chairman of the party. And uh, everybody is uh, laughing at them. But I think the real issue really is this lack of internal party democracy. Oh, lack of internal party democracy, you know, to a party that has uh, told Nigerians that there's going to uh, change, you know, the narratives in that political uh, system or the way politics is being played in Nigeria. Uh, it is the same set of people that have been criticizing the the uh, opposition uh, People's Democratic Party for lack of internal democracy. Uh, but then, um, the, 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 though there are two separate issues, uh, the face up between Oshomale and the Haitian government, and of course the ruling of the uh, Court of Appeal, which has been lingering regarding his suspension, though they are interwoven, you know, that, that was the genesis of all. Um, the, the major crisis now is about identifying, you know, who succeeds or who takes over from Oshomale after the court ruling. And uh, there has been a lot of struggles, you know. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the, this uh, fellow, uh, Gaidam, announced himself as the, 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 the next chairman of the party. And then the National Working Committee coming up with the name of uh, Elliot Ita and then, uh, and then Ajimobi, I mean, the whole fought for Ajimobi. How are you looking at this? Um, does it, is it in tandem with perhaps the constitution of the party? Or has, has the constitution of the party been set aside you know, for people to just interpret what they, they feel should be? Well, I think the first issue is uh, this matter got out of hand last year and it went to court. At the time it went to court, Gaidom was the most senior official of the party. And since the court accepted Adam Soshomole could no longer be the chairman uh, since uh, he had been uh, sacked by his own local branch of the party, then the leadership went to Gaido, which made sense as of that time. Of course, since then, the party appointed other officials, including the deputy uh, national chairman of the party, Southwest, who are higher in the party hierarchy than Gaidom. But the fact of the matter is that there is a substantial, there is a substantive court ruling on the matter, and once the courts have ruled, then what they have ruled must stand. So I think it was wrong for the National Working Committee of the party to say they disregard the court ruling and they wanted Ajimobi to be the new acting chair. At that time, they also knew Ajimobi was not 
uh, available to take over that leadership. So why do you appoint somebody you know is not available? Why is it not in tandem with the constitution, the constitution of the party? Because uh, looking at the hierarchy now, after the, I mean, the next person to succeed, perhaps the, the, the chairman, is of course the deputy national chairman. And we're talking about South, South, South now. Uh, and then uh, uh, looking at the, the fact that uh, uh, Gaidom is, of course, a vice, the national vice chairman. Uh, he is, uh, uh, just like we rightly put, you know, he is below the ladder in terms of who takes over. So why this uh, confusion? Well, my understanding is that the party constitution says in the absence of the chairman, the deputy national chairman from his zone would take over. In that case, it would be the south uh, south zone, in which case Ate should have been the one to take over right away. But for whatever reason, they decided they will not appoint him. They will appoint the deputy national chairman from the southwest uh, and not from the south south. But then, like I said, he wasn't available. Then they come back to the deputy national chairman from the south south. All of this shows reckless behavior and complete disregard for the rule of law. The party is showing Nigeria and indeed showing the world that they do not take their own party constitution seriously. They do not take the rule of law seriously. And they do not take internal party democracy seriously. Because uh, very clearly, the decision they took was not in conformity with the constitution of the party. Yeah. It appears, you know, that the, the, the party is, is, has been split you know, into two factions now. Um, and all fighting, you know, for uh, perhaps, you know, the, the, the sort of the party ahead of 2023, for instance. Uh, looking at the South-West connection now, uh, those pushing for a gym of the, uh, were said to have come from the, you know, the camp of uh, the leader of the party and all of that, uh, which is trying to consolidate this group of the party. Again, there is also, uh, I mean, uh, some some concerns being raised about the the the, the, the connivance, if you like, or the merger, or the coming together of the two. I mean, the Amechi and of course Erufai to also wrestle the power from the leader of the party. Uh, that that why that's why perhaps the the question of Gaidam also arises and all of that. How are you looking at this demonstration and and the you know the factionalization of the party along this line? Well, we all know that the party, the struggle for 2023 started on 29th May 2019 when the president was inaugurated. They did not even give one week uh, before starting all these schemes on who will be the most powerful in preparation for 2023. And I think it's a wrong attitude. Uh, they needed to uh, keep politics aside for at least two years and focus on their achievements in governance rather than fighting for the next presidential uh, seat. But then that's uh, where we are. Uh, these factional struggles have been very deep, uh, very, in very intensive, and above all, very bitter. Secondly, they have not been respective. They have not shown any respect for the constitution of the party and for the political succession arrangements that exist within the party uh, structure. All this shows that in Nigerian politics, this struggle for power is the only motivation factor in determining political struggles. Nobody is really thinking, what can we do for the good of the people of Nigeria? The question everybody is putting on the forefront is, how can I get power for myself? So it's a type of politics that's uh, really self-centered, that's uh, based on uh, selfish uh, motives, and does not at all have the interest of the majority of the in terms of the central objective of seeking power.
Okay, now uh, looking at the, I mean the implications of all of this uh, for a political party that uh, has the, 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 the uh, you know is on the sudden at the centre, and of course uh, a party that Nigerians are looking up to perhaps to change the narratives as I said earlier on. Um, how do you think you know this will affect or impact on our democracy? Uh, you know, looking at the fact that it should be centered on, I mean, just like you said, should be people oriented, of course, should also uh, respect the rule of law and, and of course, uh, entrench internal democracy and all of that. Well, the tragedy of the APC, and that's also true of a lot of the other parties, is that they are fighting a zero sum game. That is, one faction must completely defeat, destroy, and eliminate the other faction. Nobody is thinking of how can we have an arrangement in which we share power and collectively work for the common good. So the motivation of defeating and eliminating the other has become extremely strong. What this means is that it's difficult, if not impossible, for the party to survive intact. Uh, because the objective is to defeat and throw out the other, it means the faction that wins will eliminate the other, and that other faction that loses will have to seek for other political platforms to uh, pursue their political uh, objectives. And this is simply bad politics. Politics can be positive. Politics can be a way of aggregating interests, of working together on the basis of a common objective. That's what politics is supposed to be. But we have redefined politics in this country as a war to finish, a war to finish the opponent who is regarded not really as an opponent but, but as an enemy that must be uh, eliminated. My call on Nigerian politicians is that they have to redefine their understanding and above all their practice of politics. Politics cannot be elimination of the other, it has to be about how you can bring together people with common interests and objectives who can work together to achieve specific objectives they have set for the common people of this country. We have to remember that the purpose of governance as set out in our constitution is the security and welfare of the Nigerian people. In these struggles, nobody is thinking of the security and welfare of the people. And the reality on the ground is that there has been no time in our history where security has been such threatened and welfare has been completely uh, abandoned and set aside. So the Nigerian people at this time are suffering immensely from the difficult situation in which they live. And rather than address the challenges facing Nigerians, these politicians are in a fight to eliminate uh, each other. I saw, for example, the, a video where Adam Soshomole was alleged to be celebrating his victory over Obasik, and that he had now eliminated Obasik. I think somebody needs to explain to them that that's not the political objective. The political object objective is to improve the lives of the people of Edo State. And if that's what they are thinking, the solution can be the elimination of the other in a way that's undemocratic, that is not respectful of the rule of law. The objective should have been, how can we all work together to improve 
conditions of life in Edo State. Looking at the situation, of course, the role uh, of, of the president in all of this, President Muhammadu Buhari, many should have been interested in what is, what is happening in, in his political party, especially uh, in his urban districts. We've seen how previous uh, presidents were able to intervene where there are disputes or disagreement within the party structure. Uh, but in, 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 uh, in, the, in this case, President Muhammadu Buhari seems to be indifferent about what is going on. Uh, some say perhaps that's, that's how it should be. Uh, he should allow the, the democratic organs, especially of the party, uh, to, to decide and take decisions on issues that affect the political party. Others felt it is not so. Uh, the president should have intervened, you know, to save the party from further uh, degenerating into this. It has lost several states on the ground of some of these disputes. How are you looking at the role, you know, of Mr. President in all of this? Well, you know, uh, normally in a presidential democracy, you cannot be president except if you are nominated by a political party and they campaign for your success. When you are elected, the tradition is for you to say, okay, now I'm the president of all Nigerians. I will no longer be active in uh, my political party. I'll let the party run itself and I'll focus on how to address the uh, problems in Nigeria. So that's the norm. However, we are not in a normal political situation in this country. We are in a situation in which people who have political responsibility within the party act in ways that are reckless. In such a situation, the president, as the most senior member of the party, has a responsibility to say, look, this person is acting in a way that's harmful to our party, is acting in a way that's disregarding the rules of our party. And therefore, I will not allow this type of irresponsible behavior to happen. Or they sit down, have uh, an adult in the room who will say, let's not destroy ourselves. Let's look at some look for a solution that will keep the party uh, together. Uh, you see, the problem in this country, as far as party politics is, allowed, is uh, concerned, is that you have one individual who takes all the decisions. So he'll appoint all members of the committee. So he will decide all the delegates. And then he'll give them instructions. Which means the party is not really operating on the basis of its constitutive organs. It is uh, behaving as something owned by one person who has the right to do whatever they want with the party. That's really the big challenge that they have to think about and they have to address if they wish to survive in the coming years. Right. Uh, this is just happening, you know, uh, shortly after the nation celebrated uh, uh, what is now known as democracy, the, the June 12th. Um, the president came out and reeled out his achievements and all of that, uh, even uh, without mentioning some of the steps taken to deepen democracy or to advance uh, democracy. And then shortly after, now the crisis in the party. And of course, one issue that is also... Uh, I mean, taking, I mean, uh, taking the attention, the attention of Nigerians, the arrest of people who have, who have protested, you know, constitutionally in line with their constitutional rights, uh, you know, against the killings by bandits and all of that. Are we really in a democratic state in this country, or are we just um, deceiving perhaps ourselves that we are running democracy? <laughs> That's a very difficult uh, question, but. My understanding is this. Democracy is always a work in progress. When you look at our political history, we have had very limited patience with democracy. The First Republic lasted only five years. The Second Republic lasted only four years. But the Fourth Republic that we're in now 
we thank God has lasted for 21 years. Now the expectation is over that 21 years, democracy will deepen, the culture of collective work will develop, and the capacity to deliver democratic dividends will grow. Unfortunately, the way in which we practice our democracy has not allowed room for democracy to be deepened. This means the, there's too much conflict in the way in which we play politics in Nigeria. That has to change. So the lesson I learned from it all is, no, we can't say we are not a democracy. We are a democracy, but our democracy has a lot of weaknesses. It has a lot of challenges. And moving forward, we have to learn to address those weaknesses and to solve those challenges that have been placed before us. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything you want to add? No, that's fine. Thank you very much. That has been uh, Professor uh, Jibril uh, Ibrahim, uh, of course, uh, uh, former director, Center for Democracy and Development. Uh, together we'll be looking at the crisis uh, in the ruling of Progressives Congress. Of course, the leadership crisis that's uh, staring the party apart and, of course, uh, has also undermining our democratic experience. Thank you very much uh, once again for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. And with us, we come to the end of uh, State of the Union this week. Uh, we hope uh, next week we shall come your way with another interesting package and another interesting topic, especially in our policy. Um, until then, my name is Sir Christian. Have yourself a wonderful day. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all.
everyone i'm so glad i'm so happy to be back on air wow that was a long time 